Good afternoon or good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is Wissam Sharafidi speaking to you from Dearborn Blog and the second episode of We Are In This Together. And uh, this is uh, today we are in March 21st, 2020, and it is 7 p.m. And we have our first guest uh, with us, our first guest uh, to this series is uh, Mr. Hadi al Dibak. Uh, Mr. Hadil Dibek is a musician, composer, and cultural entrepreneur based in New York City. He has collaborated with prominent figures and institutions in the arts, culture, and education sectors, including New Yomaya Silk Road Ensemble, Harvard Graduate School of Education, the Kennedy Center, TED, Disney World, Imagineering, and more. Hadi founded several cultural startups, including Grand PA, Circle World Arts, and the Brooklyn Nomads. His TED Talk discussing the importance of funding the arts and artists uh, have has gone viral with over 1.25 million views. We're going to post a link to it in the uh, comments, so make sure uh, you see it. So welcome, Hadi, from New York. Thank you for having me, Wissam. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you, and uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us uh, today. Happy to. As you know, uh, we are living in very special circumstances, and we are living uh, history right now by really, uh, it, it might be perhaps the biggest event of our lifetime. Would you agree? It might be. Um, I think like in our modern history, we, we, we've been reading a lot about these previous uh, events in our history with famines and and smallpox and where people, 27% of the population dies. Um, but once you, you live something similar to it, your, your perception of, uh, of that fact changes completely. You start to feel the heat, as they say. Yes, it's uh, <clears throat> something like this that we've read about all of a sudden to be in the middle of, uh, it doesn't, I, I can't feel it yet. I, I still feel I'm a spectator and yeah. it doesn't feel real for some reason. Yeah, I hear you. I actually had this uh, reaction and um, conversation with my brother the other day. I was telling him that I don't know if it's going to hit me at some point. You know, sometimes when you're about to travel, like you go back home, you're with your family, and then you're about to leave, and you feel everything's fine. But once you actually get much closer to the um, departure time, you, you feel different. Um, you feel that it has hit you at that moment. I feel I'm still there. I don't feel I'm at the airport. Mm -hmm. you know? So I don't know how it would feel like to get there. I hope we don't get there. I hope we overcome this before. But, yeah, I was gonna say, I hope you never make it to the airport. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, it seems there's a lot of uncertainty about what's happening today, and um, I'm trying not to let this uncertainty uh, affect me negatively, but in a way, um, keep me positive. And. Uh... Had you're a musician and you're you're always uh, busy in New York uh, in different performances, putting uh, music, musical and artistic projects together. Uh, you're very creative. I know you personally, and you're one of the most creative people I've met. Uh, we've we've sat in certain sessions where, in the middle of the session, you create something new, uh, or you come up with ideas that really, uh, you know, uh, light, light lights up a bulb over everyone's head. Uh, so I feel that this time has a, uh, has, a, has a different effect on you. So tell us first, tell us about New York, mm -hmm. the greatest city in the world, uh, and allow me to say that. And tell us how does New York feel now? I mean, we've seen movies where New York is, uh, is yeah. after the apocalypse. Uh, but now walking in the streets, it must feel something eerie about it. And tell us about those uh, feelings and then tell us about you personally like how are you handling uh, yeah. this first week of quarantine 
Well, you know, I, I, I am committed. I have been committed to, to quarantines and I haven't been going out that much except within the proximity of my blood, just like walk and, and see, uh, you know, get fresh air and, and see the sunlight. Um, but from, from what I'm seeing from uh, hearing um, the news and checking on my friends who live in the city, yes, things are, are significantly changing. People are feeling the panic. They are staying in. They are respecting the quarantine, which is good for everyone. Um, we've all seen pictures from New York, um, you know, Square, uh, Times Square, where it's pretty empty, uh, which is obviously not the picture we have in mind for that space. Definitely, there is an impact of what's happening. Um, it's it's both uh, um, explicit and impl implicit, and the implicit impact um, is on the lifestyles of of people and their emotions, and especially those who aren't used to staying home for too long and um, and and feeling in a way uh, imprisoned or having more constraints than they are used to. Now, luckily, as a musician and a freelancer who get to work from home and from my studio a lot, in that sense, I haven't been impacted that much. You know, I spend, I've, I've have been spending most of my time uh, indoors. Obviously, I go outdoors when I have something to do, but when it's spring or summertime, I go to the pier, I go to the park, I like to be in nature. I would say um, I'm realizing I'm a bit of an introvert, so that hasn't been affecting me too much. I've been uh, impacted with um, the gigs that I've been doing and my business, of course, because it's obviously uh, a community experience business and um, many artists, including many artists, have been affected negatively with that but also many other businesses and it feels that the um, the the financial and economical impact is something that will continue to to uh go down and i honestly i'm i'm trying to be observant of where this might take us and what implications this could have on our economy and our society as a whole so Hadi, as you know, uh, when this started, uh, if, if I have interviewed you a week ago, it would have been completely different from today. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really sure if I interview you a week from now, if it's going to be the same or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel like we are recording um, uh, history as it happens. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is one of the purposes of this uh, program, is to actually record the, the, the feelings of people the, the actual life of people, rather than everything that we're hearing is scientific data and news and impact. But yeah. uh, we, I wanted this program to be really dedicated to the feelings, emotions, thoughts, aspirations, fears, desires of, of humans all over uh, the world. So, um, uh, we, we, you know, we... Uh, you, as a, as you said that, you know, you've uh, walked the city of New York. You know, I know that um, New York is a very dense area. Uh, the, the usually, you know, rent is very high. Uh, usually several roommates uh, occupy the same uh, space. It's a very densely populated area. And I always thought to myself how it must be much harder for New Yorkers to isolate uh, being, you know, packed into these uh, houses and spaces together. What is, how is, how is it, how is, how is it happening in New York? How is social isolation happening among these circumstances? I wouldn't say it's easy. Um, but at the same time, you know, people around the world and in New York City, they're starting to see the, uh, the gravity of what's happening. And uh, we understand this is no joke. Um, and at this point, the best we could do to protect ourselves is to stay in and to, to be cautious of not like, you know, uh, being in crowded spaces, whether it is public transportation 
or, or venues or restaurants and stuff like that. So some people are obviously connecting with their loved ones through virtual methods, you know, Skype or WhatsApp. Um, similarly, you know, what we're doing now with this live, live call as well, these are all alternatives to uh, physical presence. So people are resorting to this. I don't know how, you know, a, a, a house with four or six roommates function at this point. I don't know, like, what kind of dynamics and what kind of uh, tension exists in such circumstances. Um, I don't uh, experience that myself, so it's hard for me to tell. But what I do know is that uh, many of my friends, whether they have full-time jobs, they are full-time employees, or if they are freelancers and artists, their projects and uh, their uh, physical presence is no longer needed. Uh, and instead, they are asked to work from home or their gig or theater play is postponed. And now they just have to fill their time with work or some other creative stuff. So uh, if, if a group of roommates are living together in a house and, uh, you know, they have different ways of reacting to this and uh, one, you know, not all of them as strict about isolation as others. Uh, do you know of any story that actually creates tension? I don't actually. And, uh, <laughs> other, than, other than your imagination. <laughs> other than my imagination. I mean, if... It will be difficult, man. Like, yeah, imagine you have six people or four people in a house and, and one of them, um, you know, is not committing to the social distancing and that, you know, that is dangerous uh, exposure for the others. But let alone, you know, let alone uh, if they have even, if they are committing to social distancing and each of them have, like different uh, characters or coping mechanisms, um, some being loud, some being like completely um, uh, depressed, some being completely vocal. It's not easy times. And uh, it definitely requires a lot of awareness and a lot of understanding and compassion to make it work. Thank you. So uh, what do you think, uh, how do you think we're going to come out of this if, if this is hopefully doesn't really take a very sharp turn to the worst? Um, how, how do you think so far, uh, how are we going to get out of this uh, emotionally? Uh, what things have changed in you permanently, you feel? Mm. That's a good question, Wissam. Um, well, one thing again as i was saying like it would probably different differ from one person to another uh i think one thing that most people will probably come out with is uh, a sense of appreciation more appreciation to what's around us more appreciation for the things that we we can no longer have access to to physical touch to physical presence to community uh, to being outside, to freedom, to walking out anytime you want and being, um, you know, within six feet or two feet distance from someone else without fe feeling worried. Um, I, I believe we will definitely appreciate these small things, which we are ought to appreciate all the times. Um, so that is a good reminder, I would say. Um, maybe another, another thing is... Um, just uh, understanding or also remembering how vulnerable we are and how small um, most conflicts are related to the what what really happens in life um, when it comes to to life and death when it comes to uh, a shared disaster and catastrophe like the one we're living now people tend to come closer together and they tend to become more compassionate with each other and that makes me wonder like do we need uh, do we need to have a disaster to bring us together um i definitely hope not uh, there is less talk about war now 
which is good, but wars are still happening, unfortunately. You know, like the war on Yemen continues. Um, there are definitely a lot of other you know, conflicts in the world that are still happening. If anything, I hope we come out of this with a more elevated and mature, higher self kind of uh, realizations that makes us focus on bringing well-being and to to the world to the people around the world and less about uh, greed and uh, going into disastrous conflicts this is, so this is actually from like the individual maybe as well as communal and a larger entity point of view um, I will also want to address the environment. You know, I think we read some reports recently about places where uh, the industry, industries has stopped work because of the quarantine and uh, nature has been flourishing. You know, whether it is in places in, in, in Asia or in Europe or in America, all over the continents. And this is a reminder for us to just like be more respectful to Mother Nature. I don't think what's happening to us now is a punishment. Um, although what we have been doing to Mother Nature and to Earth deserves punishment, but I don't. I don't look at it this way. I think um, in nature we are not the only living organisms, and we're not the only. Um, species that has superiority over over different things um, so i really hope that we get out of this with a change in the whole system and i hope that we don't just continue to do um, the the previous patterns once we are out of it thank you hadi uh, as far as creative work do you feel uh, that uh, this has inspired you for any type of new work, or, or it has inspired you in a in a, in a work that you're already working on, with with a different vision. Mm. Um, I'm definitely doing creative work. I'm continuing to do my creative work. I am practicing more. I think one one change that has uh, happened due to this event is. Um, is this kind of urge to put my work out uh, sooner than later? I have I have some projects that I've worked on that I haven't really publicized yet, and I think um, I feel that okay, this is the time to to put it out there. You never know what will happen, and I would like to share it with more people. Creatively speaking, I am thinking of a, a few projects that. I, uh, I've been contemplating back in the days and they, some of them were projects that could be virtually shared. So I'm thinking more about how to make that happen these days. I, I, I'm not there yet, but it's, I have time to think about them. Now, you know, artists, uh, they already are struggling to uh, uh, make a living out of their art. And this is one of the subjects that you were, uh, uh, you you've talked about especially in your TED talk, uh, mm -hmm. which is a very important talk. We're going to leave a link for the audience to uh, to watch it. Uh, now you know with with all the talk about well, first of all about the the wave of uh, um, the wave of let me say a social socialist talk with the uh, with the uh, elections. Uh, mm -hmm. There is uh, and, the, and the big support of uh, youngsters uh, that uh, has has been shown to the one of the uh, candidates, uh, and now with all the talk of the government of uh, supporting and uh, um, directly people by giving them uh, payments or uh, etc. Mm -hmm. um, I think that and and now with 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 a large uh, percentage of the workforce out of work. The idea of UBI, the universal basic income, and the idea of uh, uh, a bigger government is really more palatable. It's, it's going to be uh, something that more people buy in 
after mm-hmm. this uh, crisis. And I think that goes with your uh, proposal, which is a tiny little fraction uh, from from this, this these bigger proposals. And it feeds right directly into our human, you know, the, the reason why we live. Like right now, uh, we are feeling it the most. We are feeling that deprivation of things that we took for granted before, a simple walk in the park or going to a museum or... Uh, um, you know, enjoying a concert, uh, enjoying a play. So um, do you feel that this will actually be a forward step to art after getting out of this this conflict? Or do you feel that there is going to be a, a different level of prioritization that's going to throw art even further down the, the priorities of, of governments or people? That's a good question. I surely hope that we will come out of this with more appreciation for the arts and artists. Definitely the arts and artists is um, that have taken a big uh, toll from, from a big hit from what happened. And I'm talking obviously in like more financial and economical terms here, right? I feel from what I've been working on in the past I feel that the system, uh, most systems around the world do not appreciate or value the artists as they can. Despite the fact that the arts and artists bring so much to the economy and bring so, so much to the society on multiple levels. We're not just talking uh, from economical and financial, but also we're talking about the well-being, we're talking about documenting the, the culture, we're talking about expressing the identity, we're talking about giving people more to uh, think about and uh, to appreciate and to, to live through. And sometimes the arts is about a beautiful thing. Sometimes the arts is about an ugly part of us, an ugly side of us, but that in its own is important and is beautiful. Um, it will obviously be so sad if we get out of this and we decided to cut down more and more on arts and on education. But unfortunately, because the system that is currently existing doesn't, um, hasn't changed really, I don't see like how coming out of this will make, will prioritize the artists and the arts more and more unless we, we do a radical change. And that radical change have to start with the mindset first. Like we have to really understand and start to appreciate and value the arts in our communities. We have to appreciate the the idea of, of the thought and, and the project and the play and the music and create a system where all creative people who have so much to give to our society are supported because otherwise, um, you, you will not have a society that is um, generating a lot of beauty and uh, and discussing a lot of important thoughts. That's my opinion on this. Thank you. Do you have any uh, final thoughts uh, uh, about this, this crisis uh, and a message to artists, to fellow artists, and then to fellow humans all over? My message to all the people is to um, stay strong and positive and as much as we can, of course, to, uh, to take advantage of what's happening in terms of uh, self-reflections, in terms of thinking about um, what we would do once we are out of this, but also what we would do currently to, um, to use our time efficiently uh, obviously, we can no longer take everything for granted. Um, the communicating with our loved ones now is, is beautiful and is important and is supportive. My message for my fellow artists, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't want to I don't want to preach uh, at all here. I could talk about my own experience. Like I feel that this time um, is giving me 
this this event has given me more time to practice, to think about a few things. I'm trying to share more and more. I'm trying not to postpone some of my projects and just keep them in the drawer. So maybe one thing I would say like, hey, if you feel that you wanna take your ideas out of the drawer and, and share it with, um, with the world and the community around you, go for it. Uh, I know it's not easy. It hasn't been easy for me to just uh, keep on like sharing stuff and exposing myself, but um, I think it's worth it. It's uh, I'm I'm working on it, and it's, it definitely uh, gives me satisfaction when I see someone else is doing that. Okay, uh, Hadi, uh, with if you don't have any more thoughts, uh, we'll we'll give you time if you want to uh, share any any more. Uh, but we will we will end these episodes with uh, um, uh, a habit or a ritual, mm. and this ritual uh -huh. is I'm going to ask you uh, what is the last book that you read or that you're reading, uh -huh. what is the last song that you that you heard. Uh -huh. You have to uh, answer honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and the, the last film, the last show. Uh huh. Um, and uh, also, if there is a game or film that you recommend, okay. And then you will add a question that mm. you will answer, but it will be added and asked to every guest after you. I like that. So we'll start with book. What book are you reading or you've read? The last book I read. Um. What, what was the last book that I read? Actually, I have so I have this this habit sometimes. Like I read one, book, huh? one book at the same time, but like this one, I I was I've been reading told story, mm -hmm. short stories. Yeah, there is a story, the prisoner the prisoner of of caucus. It's, it's a good theme for now. <laughs> it's, yeah, almost. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it's one of the latest book I read. There is this book. There is also uh, Sapiens that I read and enjoyed. There's like some Arabic book, um, Haki Araya, Haki Saraya. It's, uh, it's a book about like folk tales and folk sayings. For who? What's that? Who's the author? Uh, Salam al Rasi. Mm. And what book do you recommend? Well, I, I mean, I like sci-fi. I would recommend Three Body Problem. It's mm -hmm. a, a sci-fi book by a Chinese author that I forget his name, but it's one of the books that I certainly enjoyed. So for sci-fi readers, I recommend that. What is it called again? Three Body Problem. Three Body Problem. Yeah. All right. Because we'll type these later in the in the uh, comments and we'll also uh, leave a link for them. Okay, last song, last song you heard and then a song that you recommend. Well, last song I heard, uh, honestly, was just like not too long ago. It's uh, one of the songs that I wrote and composed for a project I did for Facebook. It's, um, there, there are one, one of 12 songs for Facebook Creator Studio. I could mm -hmm. share the link later with you guys. It's um, it's a song uh, that is called Illi Kilmi, like tell me, tell me a word. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of suggesting a song, recommending a song, there's so much, there's so much mm -hmm. to recommend, like, um, like, I don't know even like where to start, honestly, but there is this song, hold on. I'm gonna actually. Yeah, feel free to uh, actually gonna... put it in the comments. Yeah. Yeah. There is. Um... Oops. Correct. I like just to listen to soundtracks of movies uh -huh. and some musicals. 
So um, I don't know if you ever seen uh, Wes Anderson's Fantastic Mr. Fox. Uh -huh. It's a stop motion animation and it has some beautiful music score. So, you know, interesting. Can you share? Can you share your screen? Do you want to share your screen? Um, I, I'll share the link to those actually. I think okay. it's really efficient. Mm -hmm. There's also um, a musical that I started listening to yesterday. It's called um, Hates Town. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we've got we've got our uh, <laughs> we've got our recommendations for song. The last film that you've watched. The last film that I watched, uh, well, earlier today, I, I saw this uh, film on Netflix. It's an Arabic uh, animation film called Masamir. It's, I think, a Saudi production. I used to like watch a few episodes here and there on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, it was okay, you know, it, it wasn't the best, but, uh, you know, that's one last uh, film, uh, animation film that I've seen. Uh, what I would recommend in terms of movies, um, hmm. you know, it's a classic, like, Oh Brother, Where Out Thou? It's, mm. a, it's a classic movie that I, I probably recommend to people. Great. Okay, and the show, a show like on Netflix or on another streaming service? Yeah, I actually have, have, was watching Kingdom. It's a Chinese show, uh, a Netflix production. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was mm -hmm. good. It's like, it's, um, it's very re uh, resonant with our times because it, it talks about a pandemic and it's more of like historical zombie kind of show. But mm -hmm. when you watch it, you could, uh, you could feel like so much uh, parallelism with what we're living now. Another show I watched like a month or two ago with my aunt actually, it's a uh, Egyptian show. It's called... Uh, this evening, had al Masa. It's also mm -hmm. on Netflix. It was really well done, and I was. Really, impressed. you recommend it? I would recommend it. Yeah, yeah. Great talents in our mm -hmm. in the Arab world. Like, um, it made me proud of the talents we have over there. Uh, what was the name of the Chinese uh, uh, Kingdom. program? Sorry. Kingdom. Kingdom. Okay. Shows had he recommends. This evening. Yeah. And Kingdom. And uh, finally, a game. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, an online game or a board game or. I'm big on chess, man. I, I like <laughs> chess.com. So it's a safe, safe answer. <laughs> it's, it is what I do. So, be, you know, beyond that, I don't really know uh, or, or explore many online games so chess.com mm. is is my my go away okay chess.com anyone can create an account and play yes and you get ranking and you go up in ranking exactly yeah. what's your ranking right now now it's like 15 15 50 or like you know oh, between that's not 50. bad <laughs> yeah, pretty good, I guess. yeah yeah <laughs> Can you pick who you play with? Maybe we can play a chess game together one day. Yes, we can. Yeah, we should All go right. for it. This is the time. Okay. And the final part is uh, a question that you ask mm. and that we will add uh, to the to this show. What do you want to hear other guests answer uh, on this yeah. show? My question would probably be, What was the last, and you know, feel free to, to phrase it um, your way, but what was the last uh, thought or idea that, uh, that, made, that gave you the aha, 
that gave you like an aha moment that that made you contemplate and and slow down and just think more about it. That would be it. Can we call it an epiphany? Um, epiphany might be like too too big of, of a word. You know, it's mm -hmm. like it's like a lot of pressure. Um, more of like what is like an idea that that you thought of that made you feel like. Oh, I want to share this with others. Like this is this is something uh, that I'm curious about. Uh, for example, and I'm gonna answer the second part of the of the, your question, which is, what's my answer to this? Yes. Uh, um, I was thinking the other day how we have different characters within us that um, when we say you or when we say I. It's an oversimplification of uh, who the individual is. And that is, there are multiple yous uh, within you, and there are multiple eyes within, within me. And one idea I had recently is that you, you shouldn't and we shouldn't suppress these different parts of us. It's a process to learn who, who are these different selves within you. And instead of suppressing them for one reason or another, it's worthwhile to getting to know them more, to listen to them, and to uh, make deals with them. And say like, okay, listen, I heard you. I don't think that the, this is the best moment to, to, uh, to deliver your needs. However, I acknowledge them and I'm going to deliver them later tonight or later in the day or whatever it is. And I tried that technique and I found it very useful. That's, that's an awesome idea. Uh, so you uh, reflect on the different voices that are inside of you and you actually interact with them. You interact with them and you, you manage them. I think like uh, management is, I, is like ultimate... Uh, in self-management, like how can you manage your different selves? And I think awareness, in a sense, is when you are aware of which one of you is currently you, and at the same time, how the other yous are feeling in this moment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it, it's kind of it's a lot of awareness, like and uh, and paying attention to not only how you yourself uh feeling but also the different parts of you yeah. are feeling it's it sounds philosophical a lot of views that you are here and there so uh, no, it's, uh it's like definitely from, not you <laughs> yeah no definitely it's an amazing thought i mean i've i've always felt uh, in meditation uh, yeah. when you're observing and not controlling and just observing all these voices and thoughts uh, that I'm almost, uh, these voices start to become personalities, like you're saying, different characters. The problem with me is I have a lot of those. That's, they're almost a school. Exactly. <laughs> and, and a I lot. become a principal of... <laughs> exactly. That's it. That's it. You are, um, you're constantly managing your inner world. You're, you, are, you, you have to thrive, in my opinion. I have to thrive to be a great leader within my inner world. And, and that's, that's a journey. That's a, a lifelong journey. Very difficult. Well, Hadi, thank you very much for uh, accepting our invitation and being our first guest on the uh, We Are In This Together. And, thank you for uh, me. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you as always. And I hope that uh, we will meet uh, soon in person. It seems like uh, almost uh, a fantasy these days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and all the best to you. Stay safe. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you again. To our uh, viewers, thank you very much for watching us. Please share this if you find it useful. We will be tomorrow at 7 p.m. with Dr. Adnan Jaber from Dearborn. And we will announce our next guests. Thank you very much and have a great evening.